Thirty days had passed since Morn had the visit from the Death Angel. That morning she awoke to the sound of Susie gasping to catch her next breath. She entered the room and went to cover Maddie, but she had no more life in her. Susie could barely breathe. She went to her side and grabbed her cold hand. She kissed her baby's forehead and said, It's all right. You don't have to fight no more. Tears began to pour down her face, and she began singing the lullaby that had been passed down from generation to generation. Mama's baby, and I love you. Mama's baby, and I love you. Morn felt a calm presence enter the room. There was a bright light hovering in the corner of her oldest daughter's makeshift bed. Susie looked into her mother's eyes and smiled, inhaled her last breath, and gravitated out of her shell and through the bright funnel she had been lingering around for the past few days. The room suddenly got cold, and Morn began to well. Her cry awoke the rooster from its slumber. Morn's Aunt B entered the room and lit a white sage leaf. She was carrying shroud clothing and two ears of corn, that will stay in the room for four days. She washed both of her nieces' hair with yucca shampoo. They will be buried on the fourth day near the time of their death. Their names will not be mentioned for one year to ensure a peaceful journey onto the spirit world with no hesitation. Morn's grandchildren came into the room and began lifting her from the slouch position on the floor. They gently placed her in the bed. My mother, who was three at the time, climbed in the bed with Morn and wiped every tear that dropped that day. In death and life, her children's children would give her the strength to live to the ripe age of 102.